name is Maurice Washington. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of Executive Talk. Those who are watching live or those who are watching on our social media. If you're on Facebook, YouTube, or also on Twitter, please join us there. As I mentioned before, and also for our first time viewers, on Facebook and also on YouTube are the two uh, social media platforms that we utilize in order to converse with you. We want to make sure that this conversation goes out to the community. We want to ensure that when you have questions, they're answered. Because we're dealing with the Lord in our conversations, we want to make sure that nothing goes untouched, okay? Because these are some heavy topics. When you run into heavy topics, the best thing that you can do is prepare your heart. That's how you can prepare yourself as a listener. Because if your heart's not prepared, one thing that a couple of things happen, you pass it off to somebody else. That means you say, John over there or my boss over there or, you know, everybody except for yourself. You know how that is. That's number one that your heart's not prepared. Number two is you actually shut off. Did you know that? There is a way that we can actually shut off a conversation if our heart's not prepared because our mind and our flesh will not allow us to listen any deeper than what we should. So prepare your heart, humble yourself at this moment. One thing that the series has done for me personally is made me focus on my habits. It made me focus on some things that I kind of, that. I've been working on from since healing, but at the same time, been really diligent about looking at them and showing how this shows up in my life. And there's some things that can, you can be exploring within your own personal life can, that can change the game for you. And that's what we're here to do. Okay. That's what God does. He's a game changer. He will change your life and heal you and bring you life. Most importantly. And since I brought it up a few times, you can probably guess what the topic is. Are your habits, habits toxic to your business growth? Okay, are they? You need to really consider that. You need to consider that as an employee. Are your, bad, are your uh, toxic habits that you currently have, are you affecting that person's um, business that you decided to be hired on? How are you influencing? Are you making that job just that much harder for that CEO to, to move forward as an employee? That's how you can actually look at this show and take it in. Because again, it is specific to the business owner, but also there's everything that happens within the business. And the thing that happens more than anything is people are in it. And when people are in it, you can imagine there's a lot of things that, that pop in there. So think about it from that perspective. If you're an employee, if you're a CEO, what kind of habits do you have? There's probably, and how do you know? There's probably a, a ton of things on your personal life that you intend to do, but never got around to. So if you intend to do on the back end in your personal life, are you, you're probably intending to do a ton of things into uh, your business world. So ultimately your habit is you're very well intended. Once you kind of think about that. So again, grasp this conversation because it does apply to everybody. The first question I want to come to the table with is, why is there such a commi commitment to fleshly habits? I think this is a big one. Why is there such a commitment? If you were to track back and look at some, do some inventory and think about your personal life, why is there such a commitment to these fleshly habits? If the scenario that I just brought up, you know what? There's some things in my personal life that I've always wanted to get into. There's some things in my business world that I wanted to uh, address and input. If your fleshly habit is that you're always in everything that you do very well intended, why are you committed to being well intended? And if you never even looked at it that way, look at it that way right now. Why have you been, so whatever age you are, why have you been committed? Because it's not just a, a brand new experience. Not something that you just happen to do. You just stumble upon being well intended. But it's something you've done in every single scenario in your life. Referencing back to the very first or second show, look at your relationships because I guarantee this well intended portion of you has shown up in previous relationships. That's maybe why some things have broken apart or fallen apart. Because being interacted with that well-intendedness wore somebody out. 
Maybe it even wears you out and you don't know why you're tired at the end of the day. Maybe it's in your own specific habits, but the question is here, why is there such a commitment to these fleshly habits? This is where the Lord is having me drive this conversation home as far as the fourth one is our final part of the series, is why is there commitment? Think about it. This is our time to address it. I want you to realize something here is part of that commitment is the mind governed by the flesh will not focus on fleshly habits. There is something about fleshly habits that show failure. It shows because fleshly habits are death. And when you look at death often enough, you, you start to feel bad about yourself. You, you start to get down because that is how it makes you feel. That is how it makes your employees feel. That's how it makes your employees or the people that work with you as an employee or your boss feel. It, you have left a certain feeling. So if you want to avoid it, well, guess what? Everybody else isn't. But guess what? The reason why the mind governed by the flesh and the enemy will not allow you to focus on those habits specifically and address them is because you're going to try to figure out something that's going to make you feel good. And money has this weird way of making you feel good. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and I'm going to not I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You got some money in the bank and you got, you know, you can move a little bit differently. You don't feel as bad. You can kind of push a lot of things on the side. But it's interesting what happens to a person when money is gone. Then you got the character. There's nothing, nothing having you help help you feel good. And so that's why the importance of money starts to, that's where the enemy will shift you towards money to make you not think about these fleshly habits. It will give you, money has a way of giving you the appearance of success when you're very unsuccessful with people, when you're very unsuccessful with your, your habits. It gives you something to focus on. In Galatians 5, 19 to 21, this is, again, we're going to address where these fleshly habits are coming from and what the root is, because this, is, this one particular show is that one for you to explore and move from. Always on our fourth show, just so you guys can get used to our habit here at Executive Talk, is on the fourth show, we are going to discuss how can we come away from it. What's the end result of all this stuff? <clears throat> the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debunkery, idolatry, and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions. Factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and them alike. I warn you as I did before, those who live like this who will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why am I bringing this up again? Again, the enemy is committed to you operating in this. Because remember... The enemy is waiting, for your, is waiting for your day that you pass and for you to operate in this way. Okay? You guys get the drift. So why is there a commitment to the selfish ambition that we carry? Why is there such a commitment to our rage and our jealousy and our fits of rage? It's showing up in our day-to-day -day life. It's showing up in the office space. Here, here's one thing to, to take note of. Everything that you're, all your habits, that you're, all your fleshly habits, they bother you so bad that you bring it to the office space. Did you know that? Meaning I may not know about, but I'm going to make you feel just as bad as I do because of my fleshly habits that some, something's showing up. That little thing, that little history repeating itself in your life, it's your habits creating that. Did you know that? If you want to break history, break your habits. That's how you, that's how you become a game changer. That's how you become part of a solution here in your office. That's how you become a solution in your relationships that you have. You want commitment? You want long term? Become a game changer. Change your habits. Your fleshly habits are doing something to the earth. It is doing something to people around you. This fits of rage, it's, it does show up. Taking, somebody, taking something from somebody, 
dangling a paycheck from one of your employees. That's rage. Did you, did you, did you think about it like that? That means their habit is you're, you're committed to making people feel uncomfortable around you. There's a commitment there. In Isaiah 48, 4, this part of this stubbornness, and this, again, we're talking about that question, where is that commitment coming from? And I want to make sure that it's explained. Because, again, it's not more, more so me wanting to explain, it's making sure I'm explaining what the Lord wants me to explain to you. Okay? For I knew how stubborn you were. Your neck muscles were iron, and your forehead was bronze. It means there's a hard-headedness. Have you said to your child, you are so hard-headed. What did I tell you not to do? You know that conversation. You probably had it this morning if you have, child, if you have children. What's going on with you? Why can't you break? Well, the question is, you. If that, let me, let me create a, a level of freedom in your household. Understand your child is nothing but a direct uh, correlation of you, okay? It's tree and fruit. If you cannot have your fruit change a habit that you're not willing to change yourself, change the habit here, then you can work on the habit here because the child is looking at actions. It's no different than the office space. Everybody is looking at your actions. You, you, you're tired of conversations? Break the mold. We got to stop being stubborn. We got to stop with this bronze forehead. We got to stop with this, this stiff neck, these muscle hours, and just, ugh. These, these neck muscles that are made of iron. They're strong, they won't budge. Proverbs 27 19 through 20 reads As the water reflects the face, so the heart of a so the heart reflects a true man. Okay, never satisfied. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. I want you to really consider that. There's a dissatisfaction that these habits leave on the table. You're never satisfied. We cannot find ourselves when we're operating in fleshly habits because it creates this level of unsatisfactoriness. So let's think about the general office space as a whole. You guys have seen this setup before, walked into it, and never, and this, again, this is also me too, never really sitting back and analyzing it from another perspective. In analyzing this office space, I can guarantee you, I can assume, I can't guarantee anything, but what I can assume is you can look at this conversation and assume some things that are going on. The one thing that we can consistently see with our eyes and that we can commit to and we can agree upon wholeheartedly is that looks like everybody's working. But where do the assumptions come in, Maurice? What is that all about? Well, our, flat, our fleshly habits at work is our boss may be walking down the aisle here and he sees, oh, everybody's being productive. But guess what's going on? Because of our rage issues, because of our selfish ambition, I may be trying to, I may have just now brought my screen up uh, to put my Excel work on there. But I was playing a game. I was playing solitaire at the desk. I was taking money from the agency or the department or the, from, the, from the company that you're working for. I'm trying to think about the next job. I was on Indeed.com trying to find another job. Okay? So I'm taking away from that environment. This guy here, he doesn't like this guy. These are all assumptions because he has a position that he feels like he, he should have. So he's going to be upset and bring his attitude to work every day. There's selfish ambition already in your office space. These two over here complete and feel better than these two over here because they have a different, completely different job and title. So they feel entitled. The office space can get disjointed very easily. Because we bring our fleshly habits to the table and our wants and our ambitions. Now, how does the, work, the, the Lord work in circumstances like these? How does he work in our lives? How does he need to incorporate our lives? The Lord will reverse engineer our, your habits so you can heal. 
Now, well, let me explain this reverse engineering. He has to make you finally, when you're operating from this stubbornness, and if your neck muscles are that strong and your forehead is, is operating from the place of bronze, okay, understand, the Lord is trying to, has been trying to break through this relationship for quite some time. He's always been there. But the Lord, just like, just like uh, anything else, needs juris, jurisdiction. Meaning you have to choose the Lord in his ways in order for the healing to begin. To begin. You have to choose to unstiffen your neck and your forehead and allow the Lord to reverse in, in, engineer your habits. He needs, the Lord needs to actually explain to you and show you how you are. The first question is, are you willing to actually see your own personal habits? This is, should, should you answer that right now? Well, why not? But most importantly, are you, if you're shown what your habits are, are you committed to doing the work? And I'm not talking about that, you know, like a three-month trial period working to kind of see, oh, wow, that was pretty cool. And I'm talking about long term. Because remember, if you've been doing fleshly habits for up until whatever age you are, well, then that takes just that many years to actually start, the, start to renew. It actually will happen faster, but the commitment has to be off the charts. So let's talk about this. In 2 Corinthians 7, 1, it reads, Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates the body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence of God. Now, how do we interpret that scripture? This is, is an interesting scripture because a lot of us are, say, we, we throw this thing out, we're OCD. There's nothing wrong with being OCD, okay? But it's interesting, we're OCD on stuff, but we're not OCD on our character. You notice that? Because stuff, you can, you can manage, you can judge, you can look a certain way. But the Lord wants us to be OCD when it comes to perfecting ourselves. So do you realize, or just a second ago, I said there's got to be a commitment to this change of habits. There is something that you have to, you're, the Lord, as he's working with you, there's an expectation as he keeps on working with you and redeveloping you and reverse engineering your life and everything that you know and understand. It says, purify yourselves. This reverse engineering, this, this healing that's about to take place, again, if you choose the Lord, if you choose to be obedient and allow the Lord to be the guidance of your life, what's going to happen is you, he's going through a purification process. Anything you purify, understand. It's kind of like your water, if you still have one of those um, water filters at the house. Okay, you send the water through, you get it through the system, you get the slow drip, and it takes about five hours in order to fill up the tank. <laughs> you just don't even want to drink the water because it took so long to fill up. That is actually about the same kind of process that you need to go through in order for you to start to purify yourself. Because your commitment has been so strong with the fleshly habits because it is giving you a sense of achievement. That the Lord needs to actually break you of you have not achieved anything. And let me show you what life really is. So this purification process from everything. Uh-oh, there goes that word, everything. This is where people stumble when it comes to healing. It says everything that contaminates the body and also your spirit. Why would the Lord promise a blessing and then kind of leave some things unfiltered, okay? Send you through the purification process of the water filter, and then all of a sudden, oh, shoot, I got you this far, and oh, you know, I forgot to purify that. No, the Lord is going to purify everything in this process, in your healing. It does not stop. 
But in that purification process, guess what? You're starting to start to perfect holiness out of reverence for who? Out of God. Now you're not even worried about people so much because by default, what you start to do is you start having reverence for God and say, oh, let me not do that. But what is he doing? What is he healing all at the same time? I bet you don't know what it is. I, actually, I bet you do. It's your habits. If you're starting to perfect holiness out of everything, don't you think your habits are starting to get much better? Consider the, 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 the reverse engineering that God is creating in your life. Now your habits are starting to change. Once you start saying, you start denying the flesh, uh-oh, guess what? You, you start walking differently. You, you, ooh, I was about to do that habit again. Oh, ooh, all right. Out of reverence for God, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'll go sit down. Maybe I'll just go to sleep because I'm in a place. That's, that's been my process for quite some time. So, you, but you're starting to perfect holiness. You're starting to get good at this thing. And again, what is it addressing? It's starting to address your habits. It's starting to reverse engineer how you do life. Romans 13.10, the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, and any other commandments are summed up in this one decree. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love does no wrong to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this, understanding the occasion, the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. Okay, talking about now. For our salvation is nearer now than what we first believed. Okay, as the days go by, there's salvation getting a little bit closer. We don't know how, how long soon is in the Bible, but understand, be prepared. Be prepared. But nonetheless, back to the point of, Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Did you realize in fleshly habits, there's no love for anybody except for yourself? All your habits are coming from how you feel about the moment and how you're going to operate and what you're going to do. But this commandment here is love your neighbor as you, uh-oh, guess what? Now you have some awareness as to how you're showing up to your neighbor. That's what love does. That's that reverse engineering. It's a major impact of love. The things that the Lord does not want you to do is actually helping you illustrate love and demonstrate that. That's that perfecting, the perfecting of holiness out of reverence for him. I'm going to show my love instead of my, my hate towards people. And it will show up in your habits. And your habits will, is a love language. Wow, thanks for thinking of me. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for changing that. The spirit habits, in order for love to do no wrong um, to his neighbor, you must be aware of the fruit that you bear. There, there's got to be a consciousness to what you do and where it comes from. If you can't trail back to your day-to-day -day in your life and th the things that you do, then you still have no awareness as to how and why you do certain things. Those fleshly habits still have a hold of you. But when you have that point where you are very aware as to where it came from and how it's showing up, guess what? Now you're starting to change. Now you're saying, I, that's a habit of mine. That's a fleshly habit of mine that I need to pray about. So now your prayers are getting specific and so is your walk. Now you're starting to change some things. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law, because there's nothing but love coming from the fruit of these things. Okay, that self-control component is huge. Control. Once you start to have self-control, and it's not easy, but once you start walking in the Spirit, you actually understand what that self-control. Oh, I'm about to do something crazy. Let me go to sleep and let me try again tomorrow or let me do something else different than what I'm doing. Okay, now you stopped a whole trail of craziness that, that was about to occur. That's your habits. It will show up in your habits. When you develop habits of the spirit, guess what? People will start to feel secure around you. You know, see, so what this picture is is a photo 
of a lady looking at cement. Do you feel comfortable walking on cracks or do you feel comfortable walking on cement that actually looks foundationally strong? You don't think twice about them. People will do business with you. Your employees will stay with you. If they leave you, they better have a really good daggum reason why they left you because they'll go to somewhere else and have a bad experience. And like, why in the heck did I leave that place? Okay, why would I fire John over here as an employee when he's been amazing? He's been foundationally strong all this time. I just lost a golden nugget out of all these people. In Ephesians 5, 15 through 16, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most out of every opportunity because the days are evil. Now, it's funny because we'll go through the whole week. We'll try to do, you know, walk in the spirit. And you know how we are when it comes to the week. I can't wait to the weekend. Don't you know the weekend is where you say, oh, I can finally let my hat down and do what I want to do. Don't you know by the time Sunday and Monday comes around, you've fallen back into the flesh? Because you went to go party, you went to go do whatever, and you thought you were a cool guy or a cool, cool girl. And all of a sudden, evil just came right back into your life. You started to walk in the flesh again. Developing habits in the spirit will develop your discernment. The better you start to discern, the more you actually will have self-control, and the better you'll be able to look at what's going on around you and make better decisions and help with these, these fleshly habits and make, make, make decisions in the spirit. Hebrews 5.14, but the solace food is for the mature. For those who have the powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Now, how often is this practice? In our very first slide, I brought you guys to Genesis 1, where he constantly talked about um, the night and day. Night and day is constant. Even year to day, no matter how crazy life has become, night and day is very constant. This is how often your practice of habit should be. Not like night and day. It should always be there. You should depend on them just as much as everybody should depend on you to have them. It's important. It's, an, it's, it's the impact. It's where life starts to begin. Please keep on following us on our social media. I want to thank you guys for enjoying or for following us in this series. This series has been very enlightening to me. I hope it has been the same for you. Take this, review it, check it out share it, and also actively move. The Lord is counting on you. But in the meantime, I actually have to get back to work. You guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.